Uh, please allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And this is a review of the Spectral DMC30 SL preamplifier. Now, it's not the current model. It's a vintage one. It's from 2003, 2004. And Adam over at High End Audio Auctions told me he had it. And I said, you know, I'd like to listen to that. I used to have a Spectral DMC-10 like 40 years ago. And I have very fond memories of that piece. So I was, yeah, I wonder what, the, what it's up to. Not, like I said, I, I don't have access to a new Spectral because Spectral isn't one of those companies that does a lot of reviews, you know, with me or anybody else. It's very, very limited amount of reviews out there on the internet or on, in print magazines. And uh, actually, they don't even have a lot of dealers. They have a very select group of dealers, not a lot of uh, global distribution. They like to just keep it the size they want to keep, but they're not interested in increasing sales year after year. They're not that kind of company. They're based in Silicon Valley in California, um, and that's where they started in 1977, and that's where they are today. And uh, the stuff is beautifully made. I remember that from my DMC-10 from 40 years ago. This one, when I pop the lid, and I'll show you the inside right now, it's, there's a, there's a lot going on in there, you know? It doesn't, you know, I, I'm one of those guys who likes simple circuits, very, and this isn't that simple. So it kind of goes against my usual uh, taste, but you know what? It sounds really, really good. So, yeah, I was in. And, you know, well, the thing that grabbed me right away was, I'm grasping for words here, the shape of music, the solidity of it, of instruments and vocals was just, mm, this is good. Not like tubes, not saying it sounds like tubes, uh, but it has a warmth to it, a fullness to it. The bass was very uh, big, very tuneful, very, you know, got my juices flowing and stuff. And well, anyway, so it sounded very, very good. And as all this is going down, I get this email from somebody who was saying, you know, you guys, you reviewers are always saying that the new thing is amazing. It's so much better than the old thing by implication. Uh, and you, you've said this forever. You've been saying it for, not me personally, but just reviewers, audio reviewers in general have been saying this for, you know, since high end started in the 70s. It should be perfect now. Shouldn't music just be 100% real and believable and natural? Because it's always getting better and better and better. I see your point. Point taken. And it's not. It's not perfect. It does not sound like real music through the spectral or anything else. But the idea that it is getting better and better and better, well, one thing is it is getting more and more transparent and clear and pristine. It's getting that. That has improved over the decades. I mean, last year, I reviewed the uh, Macintosh C22. That was my first vintage review. Macintosh C22 tube preamplifier for, that was made in 1962. It did not sound transparent, but it sounded lovely. It sounded beautiful. It sounded juicy and rich, velvety. It was just a joy to listen to. Uh, but that was a very, you know, that was really, that was seriously old. Uh, and then I did some mid-70s stuff, like the Phase Linear 4000 preamplifier. That was early-ish solid state, and it sounded very early solid state. And I don't mean that as a compliment, but it had a lot of interesting ideas in that preamp. And I also reviewed uh, an Audio Research SP3A from 1975 or so. And that one, you know, that one sounded more modern than the other two. That's for sure. It sounded more contemporary, I should put it that way. Uh, but it still didn't sound like a current preamp, but it sounded good, really good. And then later on, later that year, in 2020, I reviewed the Carry SLP-98 preamplifier. It's a two preamplifier, and I owned an SLP-98 uh, in around 2000. And that was like deja vu. I loved the Carry then, and I loved it now. It was beautiful. But... Uh, as, the, as time rolled on, things did get better in terms of being more transparent. 
but does it sound more realistic? Well, there's a, there's, a, there's a big but there. And the big but is that the recordings themselves, for the most part, aren't recorded to sound realistic. They're recorded to have a sound that the producer and or the band thinks is good and that the fans of the music will like. And they are almost 99% of them are not audio files, right? They're going to be listening in their car or on the bus or on the plane or train or at the beach or wherever at the park, not at home through a nice system. So they're making recordings in this century, in the 21st century, with a lot of compression because it has to cut through all that noise. So they're, they're not making recordings for us, is what I'm saying. So even if our gear was perfect, it wouldn't sound real. If I, I define let's say, per if perfect sound happens, uh, it would sound believable like the band was right there in front of you, or the orchestra, right? Or the singer was right there, like 100% present. That would be, for me, perfect. And that hasn't happened yet, and we're not even close to that. But this DMC-30, well, it sounded good. It sounded transparent, but the thing that it did that really struck me was it had a sense of body. The shape of music just came through. The instruments sounded more complete, more 3D in terms of body, you know, dimensionality to each instrument than the singer was great. And it just opened up. It breathed through the, cor the clipped corn walls that I was playing. They, it just, they sounded less like horn speakers, surprisingly. It just, it just had this ease, this effortless quality to the sound, and I was, I was smitten, you know, and it was fun because this isn't what I was expecting from Spectral. Spectral to me, the stereotype of Spectral is that it's very analytical, hyper-resolving and clear, and can be ruthless in hearing all the bad that's in the recording, all the harshness and all that crap. But, uh, yeah, I could hear it, but it didn't bother me, you know, so I was... Um, I was moved by listening to this preamp. So at this point, I decided to compare the DMC-30 SL to my current reference preamplifier, the PassLabs XP-30. And right away, these are very different sounding preamps. The PassLabs is faster sounding, uh, more transparent, uh, basses, just more limber. And it has um, better dynamics, just the jumps more. The music has more contrast going through the XP30. But when I go back to the DMC30 SL, it just opens. And there's more of that sense of being there, being in the space with the musicians. So, you know, I at this point, I just want to take a little break from musical descriptions to tell you that like I said, the, this DMC-30 and the current model look exactly the same. But anyway, on the front panel, you just have this row of buttons for input selection, which is kind of normal, but no volume control knob. I missed not having a knob. I definitely did. It's a volume up, volume down button, and of course on the remote, volume up, volume down. I want a knob there, but anyway, no knob. Um, but one of the, there's a couple of features there that you don't usually see, like phase invert. So that used to be a more common thing uh, with preamplifiers. It would let you invert positive to negative. And when you do that on some recordings, you can really hear the difference, whether you hear the, it non-inverted or inverted. And it was nice to be able to do that with the DMC-30 SL. But the, the build quality is absolutely exceptional. It's a very solid feeling piece. I think the chassis is steel. It's very heavy for its size. Feet are really beautifully made. Everything about it is first class. And by the way, uh, this unit, this being so old, didn't come with an owner's manual. And I called Spectral and I was asking them questions and they said, oh, we'll, we'll just send you uh, the owner's manual. I said, oh, thank you so much. And I said, oh, they said we'll have to print one. <laughs> and to do that, I said, oh, really? And they said, yeah. And it was beautifully bound. I'll show you pictures of it here. It's just Really classy, classy operation over there at Spectral. So Steve, I know a lot of you are thinking, but Steve, what if you could actually hear the new DMC-30? Maybe it would have the speed and jump factor of the XP-30 and have all that cool stuff going on in the DMC-30 SL, the old one. Maybe. <laughs> 
maybe I'll get a chance. I don't know. But as I, as I pointed out earlier, Spectral does not seem terribly interested in doing reviews. So I doubt they're going to watch this review and say, Steve, we got we to gotta get this thing to you. It might happen. If it does, that would be a beautiful thing. We will, as they say, we'll see what happens. So, you know, you know, finishing up, it's interesting. If you look around on the market, the used market for Spectral, you're not going to find that much. Uh, there's a couple of uh, DMC-30s I spotted, but they're, the, they're later ones than this, and they're more expensive. They're about six or $7,000. That's where they start. Anyway, uh, but one of the reasons I'm assuming you don't see that much used Spectral is because the people that buy it just like it and keep it. They're not you know, in that constant upgrade mode where they're going from one to the next to the next compared to, let's say, the amount of used Mark Levinson that's on the market or Krell or um, just there's, there's more of that stuff out there. There just is, right? Or Class A. There's, there's not, precious little, that's <laughs> a way of putting it, there's precious little used spectral available at any given time. Anyway, uh, but it does sort of come around to that idea of is, is audio getting better and better and better? And as I said, yes, it is in the sense of transparency and purity and that, that sort of thing. But in terms of mu a musical experience, you, you don't need to buy new. You just don't. So I think, uh, oh, before we finish up here, I do want to thank Adam over at High End Audio Auctions for lending the DMC-30 to me. Thank you, Adam. Um, but, well, now it's time for me to say my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit that button right there, right, right there. And when you do hit the bell, so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. You could also give me a thumbs up. I don't usually ask for that part. Uh, like, shares, do all that social media stuff that the kids are into. But you could also check out the Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. There's a link to that below. And there's also a link to high-end audio auctions below in the description. Uh, what else? We got playlists. We got playlists for more electronics reviews, more speaker reviews and headphone reviews and even music reviews plus interviews. So anyway, my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.